Edge 2012 is their technology innovation around storage, storage infrastructure, storage solutions, cloud, big data, all the real enablement out of the storage business. I'm John Furry, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we're here with Inhee Cho Sa, who's an IBM Vice President of the Information Management Group. Inhee, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, Thanks I'm excited to be on. here. Yeah, well, we're glad to have you. We're going to talk about big data, John, <laughs> you, our you favorite topic. you say you're topic. the big data lady at IBM, so <laughs> we're going to talk big data. So first of all, we love I big am. data. So for, for the folks out there who know us, we love big data. So um, uh, obviously, we're, we're going to talk about IBM all week, uh, today and tomorrow, but um, you guys are, have a ton of systems experience, ton of database experience, going way back into the inventor stars. In fact, I just tweeted out that the inventor of the disk drive is a friend of mine's father, uh, Randall Johnson, uh, and uh, you guys are no stranger to tech. You got Watson out there doing big data on, on a large scale uh, in the marketplace, good marketing. But big data really is disruptive and, and, and disruptive in a way that we haven't seen before since the PC revolution. Really changed the productivity equation. It changed a lot of the value propositions in the marketplace. And it has to do with a lot of technology change. So what is your view of big data right now in terms of what is big data? When you talk about big data, it's, it's kind of one of those terms, it's kind of like, depending on what view you look at it, it's different. What is it, help us tease that out. So, um, you know, big data is a hot topic for everybody, and I would say it, 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 for the first time it kind of extends outside of just the IT arena, but I, I would uh, couch it very simply as, um, we talk about four Vs, um, volume, variety, velocity, and actually veracity. You know, one of the things that I think companies are uh, struggling with is what portion of the data is the truth? And you're spending a ton of money investing your, in your existing infrastructure. Well, you forgot a V. You got so, a v yeah. Gardner forgot a V that so, Dave Vellante so had Wikibon. Four, those are four Vs, so Gardner yeah, yeah. has three Vs. You added veracity. That's right. Okay, my, my fourth V is value. Absolutely. That's sort of the, to, to me, when I talk to people, that's their biggest challenge is how do I get value, how do I monetize this data? So we got five Vs now. So well, veracity, what, what is? What well, is, what, veracity what? is truth. I also talk about three Cs. Okay. okay. So any big data platform or technology set of capabilities should collect, connect, and create value. Collect, okay. connect, create, which is similar to your value <laughs> statement, it's your, it's your day, fourth right. B. Nice. So. so big data, obviously, from, from your perspective around, there's a lot of debates around existing infrastructure in the old data warehouse business mm -hmm. intelligent marketplace. Yes. Very mature industry. Um, a lot of business being done by big players. Um, brute force, OLTP, a lot of critical systems running in these environments, but you know, big data, the new open source stuff like Hadoop is creeping up with like HBase and other things where it's not really for prime time yet on, the, on some of those critical things, but you're seeing that batch meets real time meet some use, new use cases. Absolutely. What's your view of all this data warehouse, Hadoop, business intelligence, kind of this new collection of, of, of solutions? So we've done um, over uh, 200 different engagements around big data in terms of use cases. And one of the things I've noticed is actually that in majority of the cases that clients are mixing traditional approaches, right, data warehousing, master data management, with the new techniques, whether it's Hadoop, new applications, mobile devices, cloud. And the reason for it is, is they want to augment what they have inside the um, enterprise with data that exists outside the enterprise. And that's a key part of being able to really operate, right? Because they want to automate what they're doing inside their uh, uh, enterprises and uh, keeping up with their clients. So when you talk about veracity, um, are, are we further away from the singlest version of the truth, further away than we've ever been? Does big data complicate that even further? I mean, the promise of the single version of the truth was there, certainly for reporting, mm -hmm. but it hasn't been there for predictive analytics and we sort of, a, it's been a rear view mirror BI data warehousing world and now big data has this promise of finally fulfilling that dream. Yes. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, veracity is an, a, 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 you know, could be actually an all-day conversation because <laughs> um, you're spending um, so much on your infrastructure to have a master set of information, right? To, so that it's cleansed, that you know you have the right people, um, the right scoring uh, in terms of how critical data sets are. And then when you start to marry data in the public that is um, written in different tones and sentiments, right, that is only partially there. Um, we actually think of it a little bit differently. You would think, oh, well, do you need to cleanse everything before you put it in? No, we actually think uh, about just very simply connecting the dots. So uh, recognize that the data externally will always have less, let's say, degree of uh, certainty than the data you have internally, but what it ha helps you to do is give you a better context than maybe you've been able to have um, because it's, it's a new set of data that allows you to um, derive kind of new insights for new services and new offerings. So it's very hard to 
to actually get those insights, right? You can, you can get the data, you know, the data's there, and um, we talked to a lot of Hadoop practitioners, actually John is a Hadoop mm -hmm. practitioner. So you have all this data, and then being able to analyze it, you have a lot of choices. Do I bring it into a SQL database? Do I, you know, what do, what do, what do I do? In Ateza, you guys yeah. are actually, you know, building connectors, and how do you see that all shaking out? It seems like it's very early days. It is very early days. A lot of folks are using, um, let's say, uh, uh, Apache Hadoop capabilities to pre-process data before they put it into a targeted, let's say, data warehouse where they know maybe something that they want to do, right? Where they understand the schemas. In other cases, what they're actually doing is taking the existing sources they already have um, uh, of structured data and applying big data capabilities to it because they want to analyze the logs. And the logs could be network logs about IT failures and operations, or the logs could be about uh, customer data, uh, what the customers are doing, because it's ad hoc questions that they hadn't considered uh, thinking about searching against before. So Go ahead, John. So, I mean, there's a, so I want to get your opinion on something that we're seeing a lot in the market, and that is the, um, obviously big data is all the rage. Everyone has, quote, big data mandates to do, yeah. do something around big data. And, and there's some, the early adopters kind of have specific use cases that they know, but most of the, even verticals like pharma and healthcare, like, they don't really know yet where these use cases are because they have existing businesses to run. The question I want to ask you is, what do you see around the ease of use of big data? Because there's two, there's two uh, modes, there's the PhD, Masters in computer science, systems guy who has to architect it all. And then there's the analyst who is the one crafting these use cases. Um, and a term we came up with at our last CUBE event was uh, a lot of these big data is like tailored suits. These use cases are great, you tailor yes. them up and they fit perfectly, but they're not that flexible. Yet the customers want maximum flexibility in their in, in enterprises. So mm -hmm. a balance between flexibility, but tailoring those use cases. So there's a, an emergence of a class of talent that's a little bit high end right now, yet the people who are going to be architecting these solutions could be analysts and yeah. business people. So the direction I think is um, what you're talking about, meaning uh, the applications for the various users to actually consume. Today it's not very easy to just go to uh, Apache and, and download Hadoop and, and start a search. You, you know, you're going to need at least six or seven key uh, skilled uh, uh, set of guys to be able to. Yeah, good luck uh, finding them too, right? <laughs> yeah. And it's, yeah. they work for Facebook, Google, and IBM, or you know, somewhere Absolutely. else. a complicated situation for a lot of people. It is. Sure. I, I would say IBM and several other vendors are, are really focused on how to make this a lot more consumable. Um, and we're doing this on multiple levels. One is around the applications that we develop, like Big Sheets is a spreadsheet style way of visualizing mass um, amounts of unstructured data. And we also have um, set up a big data university, which is free online. And we've had 20,000 students actually enroll. And you can go through and start to learn sort of the basics in programming. Um, one of the things I, I think you'll start to see more and more is once these applications and tools and use cases actually become more and more available, Available. You're going to have mass um, democratization of, I guess, uh, of uh, BI capabilities across the entire organization. Is that going to impact the developer community first? Obviously, the developers have to build the apps. Yes. Um, or is that going to be more of the ops guys? Oh, I think it's definitely the development audience, right? Because when I think about big data, um, you're, you've got to think about the big data uh, platform in terms of what types of applications you want to build before you s begin to think about the operations. Uh, some of the operations pieces will be relevant today, but until the application use cases are actually built, it's, it's hard to manage just the uh, But when you talk the about ups. the democratization of, of data, you're talking about putting it in the hands of business people, right? I mean, Absolutely. This doesn't, doesn't Regardless mean, of skill, that you're not right, trained. Doesn't the yeah. industry have to do that in order for big data to have truly have the impact of its vision, which is this massive you know, increase in productivity? Uh, I, I agree with you. Um, we, we actually did a unique uh, case study for the Academy Awards where uh, they had asked us to run for four hours, do a live um, simulation, and um, it, look at uh, all Twitter feeds, Tumblr feeds, you know, um, and a historical look at Facebook logs, historical data logs, and marry, as the awards are going on, different trailers and response to the trailers based on the cast, music, content, and um, during the four hours, you could actually see kind of where the audience is peaking, where they're not peaking, what's positive, negative, yeah. and then based on that, you could actually modify how you're going to then release your set of uh, trailers and or advertising around the movie premiere. So that's a very active um, a way that kind of resonates for anyone, I mean, in the consumer audience, because who doesn't love a good so movie? You bring up a good point. First of all, I, I, I think I, mem I remember seeing that. It's a really awesome 
cutting edge work. It's phenomenal. It's hard to do too, in real time. Uh, but it brings up a good point around the use case of user experience, mm -hmm. right? So there's a couple things that you're bringing out. The application there That's is right. essentially using data to change the user experience, the application being the web. The other one's mobile. Can you talk about those new user experiences? Because as the users get more socially involved with their channels and, and the way they use the web, it's not just search on Google and surf web pages anymore. Yeah. It's a lot different. So talk about the, your view of the use cases, specifically mobile too. Well, I, one of the interesting things I think with uh, big data is it's spurring a lot of requirements, not just around the infrastructure and storage capabilities, but new applications, especially mobile. And you'll see a huge increase in NoSQL as an emergence. I wouldn't say it's NoSQL, I would say it's not only SQL. <laughs> and part of it is the um, high availability and access. Now, one of the challenges though with mobile applications and mobile data is you've got to be able to store subsets of that data for a certain amount of time, and some of those um, new developing Latency tools issues. And, and programming models don't actually support all the retention requirements for the data. So, you know, uh, this whole area of mobile has How huge How do you guys solve that? Because that's really, high availability is going to, that's going to put the pressure on the, on the critical, mission critical applications, but also the retention issues about latency and data. So like, something that's five months old can be really important data. Absolutely. And five minutes. Absolutely. Five seconds. So, so how do you guys how do you guys view that solution? So a core part of what we have within IBM is called our InfoSphere family, and within InfoSphere we have not only the streams and big data capabilities from Hadoop, but we also have um, a data protection, data lifecycle, and data governance um, capabilities with uh, uh, Optum, which is uh, data archiving, test data management, as well as Guardium around data privacy and protection. Mm. So it, we're really looking at the end-to-end -end life cycle of the information. You believe that? You, you believe the statement you mentioned about the use cases being real for customers right now? Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I, I do think the um, use cases are real. Now what's interesting about how clients are really spending the time spending on big data is, uh, is they're doing all the things that they were doing before, but in a more creative way, with higher degrees of return than they were doing before. So brand sentiment, managing kind of um, uh, uh, public data that's available and marrying a subset of that with internal data to understand uh, micro segmentation of their existing purchasing audience and, and life change moments, because life change moments trigger purchases, whether you're in the insurance sector, i.e. you just got married, have a baby, or bought a car, um, or you're ready to buy consumer goods. Um, life changing moments have well, you saw that um, elements. Well you saw that uh, news story about the, the pregnancy test, right? Did you see that big data? Uh, oh no. A woman went in to get uh, big oh, yeah. um, pregnancy test and because of uh, Twitter, the father got notified. <gasps> Oh, it's after, so oh, real time. Oh my gosh. Did you see that? It was in the news <laughs> a couple weeks ago. <laughs> the, the, but the story was even more amazing, and the father snapped out, and, and so basically it was notified, like, my daughter's not pregnant, and you know, why would you even send that to me? And then it turned out, you know, a week later, he found out that his daughter was pregnant. So big data predicted. We call that data exhaust, right? There's all this, like, loose data that's yeah. gesture data and or just, you know, people are producing data with their mobile phones. Oh yeah, and, and you know, some people call data like the new oil, but unlike any other natural, re but unlike, you know, typical oil, natural like resources, it. Yeah, it right? Out. It doesn't run <laughs> out, right? You right, know, from a supply it's standpoint, infinite. it's always uh, available, and if not, it's being created at a faster rate. So, so. I wonder if we could talk about the, the IBM business model um, yeah. and the economic model around big data. So we've been having a lot of discussions in theCUBE uh, about you know the red hat of Hadoop, and Pat Gelsinger was on last week. He said there is no red hat of Hadoop. There's a lot of open source. We also had Peter Goldmacher on last week. Peter is the uh, Cowan big mm, data analyst. Mm -hmm. and he put forth, I think, a very interesting premise. He said, listen, the, the big data practitioners, the people yeah. applying big data, are going to make way more money than the people selling big data solutions. I so, believe that. So given that, that sort of open source, red hat of Hadoop, maybe, maybe not, that practitioners are going to make more money. How does IBM you know, go to market and what's the business model? Is it to really solve those problems, find, help those practitioners, create value? Um, maybe as Tim O'Reilly would say, create more value than you extract? What's the business model there? Well, uh, you know, our um, uh, CEO, Ginny Rometty, actually, one of her um, uh, key focus areas for all of IBM is to make sure that IBM is becomes very essential to every client, which means that we're really focused on clients' outcomes. And as a result of that, we're even changing some of the ways in which we're engaging with clients to say, hey, could we um, uh, negotiate kind of the value based on what IBM delivers to the value you ultimately get on the end Skin as a result? Really? Yeah, okay. uh, uh, as the return versus a traditional pricing of here's a product, 
priced at a license or a fee. So we, we have different kind of, um, uh, we're entering a new time period, I think, with big data that allows us for the first time to not only harness the new technology, but also potentially do new business models. I mean, if you even think about Rolls Royce, they're trying to figure out ways to price purchase uh, based on thrust, power thrust, rather than just the engine components and pieces. So in that model, you would share some of the risk and share some Absolutely. of the upside. Absolutely. I'll make a prediction. I would, mm -hmm. I, I'll predict that <laughs> the vast majority of clients will not go for that deal because <laughs> they, they have so much value to create. You, you'd make a killer well, in that. It's, no, well, it, it, well, it's also a hard to, it, it's yeah. also hard to predict and it's not necessarily consistent depending on the yeah. client because of, as you said from the very beginning, the use cases vary, yeah. right? And there's, and there's different, so this is a challenge opportunity in our mind because remember the client server revolution spawned massive consulting dollars mm, around the deployments yes. and the use cases so what we're watching is the balance between the and it's not a hardware product anymore it's, it's more integrated so it's a little bit not it's not apples to apples but it's close it's like you had enable enablement technology with big data mm -hmm. and then around the ecosystem uh, it'd be interesting um, my final question for you is a little bit different it's more customer specific. So mm, okay. when, you, when you're when you in front of a, a CIO or, or an executive of a large enterprise uh, and, and they ask you, but give me the bottom line about big data. What do mm. I need to do with my data? Uh, so we have a huge investment in data warehouses and database management, all that stuff, governance. Um, what should I be really working on right now? What's my top priorities around data? Uh, how should I think about it? And what should be on my roadmap? What do you tell a CIO when those conversations happen? Um, I would say first and foremost, uh, try to read up <laughs> on what's happening. I think that becomes really important because um, I would tell you actually for several clients that I've engaged with, uh, the purchaser or the inquiry that came in was not necessarily through the CIO CTO office. It came in through the line exec. So um, one of our key clients, Vestas, um, which is in the windmill alternative energy space, the SVP, their uh, senior vice president of supply chain came in and said, hey, we need a better way to manage our assets and how we deploy and determine the site to place a windmill, right? Because these things are like the size of a Hoover Dam. You can't move it once you place it. So if you think about, oh, what's the implication then to IT to predict and model the placement of these things, if your IT side isn't addressing the big data aspects of calculating weather patterns or understanding public data or understanding geospatial data or meter data or um, in the medical arena, you know, images, then you end up being behind what the business may actually be requiring today and they may be more proactive than you are. Yeah, that's. I think that's consistent with what we're hearing too about the business line managers who have responsibility want to get faster solutions to the yeah. market in terms of top line and, and cost savings. So it's really more of a business driver, but yet that's challenging because also IT has to be the enabler of that. So it's, that's, a, that's an interesting challenge. In he chose uh, <clears throat> up and coming, you know, mover and shaker within the IBM big data community. Are you the youngest vice president in the history of IBM? Is that? Uh... Uh, uh, um, no, no. <laughs> definitely no. one it's of the younger kind of ones. a serious question actually. But, uh, <laughs> Not the prototypical uh, IBM vice president. Great to see. Uh, thank you very much for coming inside the cube and Great. sharing some of your knowledge. Great conversation. Great conversation. Appreciate it. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank okay, you. Okay, we'll be back with our next guest after this break uh, and talk more about uh, big data, cloud, IBM storage, uh, and innovation. We'll be right back from SiliconANGLE.TV.